back in 2020, I believe, Warframe was supposed to get a Nemesis system. Basically, it was introduced by Monolith in 2014 in the open world action game Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Hugely fantastic game and you got to see the Nemesis system again a bit more matured in the 2017 follow-up Middle Earth Shadow of War. These were fantastic games which I loved, so obviously I was excited to see Warframe get something of the sort. And we got something, but not really of the sort. You now know them as the Kuva Lich System and the Sisters of Parvos. The important part is that with the wannabe Nemesis System, we got a whole bunch of weapons that basically dominated the meta, reinvented builds and essentially replaced our entire arsenal, or most of it. One of those weapons was the Kuva Nukor. But that was back in 2020. Since then we got a whole bunch of other weapons which are also very powerful, even a copycat-ish weapon in the form of the Tenant Cycron. So the question becomes, is the Kuva Nukor still worth it in 2023? And what kind of options am I looking at? And today my friends, we're gonna be exploring just that. As always, my name is Lazar, and this, this is the Kuva Nukor. Let's have a quick look at how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our usual free shots. The Kuva Nukor is a variant on the Nukor, and this one is a secondary beam weapon with a massive range of 29 meters by default. Yes, my friends, not only do you get 29 meters, but that beam also chains to additional targets. It used to be four additional targets, nowadays unfortunately is only two additional targets. And you can put on punch through on the weapon, it does not mean you'll get multiple chains. So again, you hit one, then it chains to two additional targets. Each beam will be doing 50% of the main beam's damage. So do bear that one in mind. The ammo is the only issue on this one. You're gonna run into ammo issues depending on the fire rate that you build on the weapon, so I would recommend you put in the excellent slot pistol ammo mutation. It's not the only good option, but we're gonna talk more about that one just a tad later. When it comes to usability and functionality, that's pretty much it. You can't really fault the Kuvanu core. There's no recoil whatsoever. It is pinpoint accurate. You got, let's say, enough ammunition as long as you can contain yourself and that is pretty much it even the reload is on the quick side let's hop into stats to see exactly what we're dealing with mod capacity is gonna be 80 out of 80 because this is a kuva weapon if you want to suck out all the mastery points available you're gonna have to format five times if you do not care about mastery points rest assured that two to three forma will be more than sufficient the same goes for tenant weapons and for the parasesis as well don't forget to jump into actions and plug in the Orokin Catalyst to double your mod capacity. And yes, 100% worth it on the Kuva Nukor. The accuracy, pinpoint accurate, ammo maximum a tad on the low side, just like the ammo pickup. Fire rate is mm, decent at 10, magazine of 77, noise alarming, reload on 2 seconds, riven disposition of nada. 1 out of 5, simply because this is a very popular weapon currently. Now, the critical chance... <sighs> is terrible, 7%, but the critical multiplier highest, if I'm not mistaken, in the game at 5x. I'm sure if I'm wrong, somebody will correct me in the comments. Now, this is essentially a tease. You know what we gotta do, right? Get bonus critical chance after effects from outside sources to make use out of that fantastic critical multiplier. Status chance, sky high at 50%, especially considering this is a beam weapon, you're gonna be getting two damage ticks per ammo. That means a whole lot of statuses into your targets. But what status is exactly? Let's discuss what kind of progenitor options you got for the Kuva Nukor. I'm gonna be running my 59.7 Toxin Kuva Nukor, which will be transformed into Corrosive and the default radiation on the weapon. Radiation and Corrosive essentially will be running amok against Grenier Armor, against Ferrite Armor and Alloy Armor. Those are the two major armor types of the Grenier faction, also known as the most tanky faction outside of the Sentience. Now, that's not your only option per se. Let's talk about Magnetic. I've seen a whole lot of fans for Magnetic and for good reason as well. If you want to build your Kuva Nukor into a primer for your melee weapon, for example, Magnetic is definitely a smart option to go for. Not only that, but Magnetic will do wonders against Corpus Faction. Now, you see, I don't really like that argument with the whole it does more damage against shields and all whatnot, simply because it's a pseudo-argument. 
The Corpus faction is the weakest faction. They can be taken out of the picture really easily. The problem with the Corpus is the abilities they have. They're more agile, they deal more damage, but they're not exactly kings when it comes to damage mitigation. I never really build my weapons against Corpus faction. It feels to me like a bit of a waste of time. That does not mean that a magnetic nuclear is not a good idea. And here's another popular option in more recent times. What about an impact progenitor, huh? Fantastic, fantastic. With a 60% impact progenitor, I'm gonna be able to use this puppy right here, hemorrhage. Ah, oh, fantastic, right? Well, yes and no. It works and it kind of doesn't work at the same time. If we could get the Kufa Nukor to a fire rate below 2.5 and we could leverage the 70%, then yes, it would have been pretty good. As it stands now, you go for a full 60% impact Kufa Nukor and you're not going to be getting yourself enough slash procs, the amount I'm talking about. Especially considering how the build needs to look. If you want to get enough slash procs, then you're going to have to use this thing, Saxum Spittle. I'm not saying it's not viable, no it is viable, but it is viable with a bit of an asterisk which is why I'm explaining you these things. So, you go with Saxon Spittle, you get that 90% extra impact, you get it over the base radiation of the weapon, and the rest of the build needs to look something like this. Vital damage with Pistol Pestilence, Frostbite, and of course Heated Charge, fantastic idea to get yourself that Vital Heat and Slash from Hemorrhage, plus Saxum Spittle. Saxum Spittle is here again to increase the value of your impact so you can get more slashes, so you get to a decent number of slashes on your target. Of course you gotta have Galvanized Crosshair, oh no, Galvanized Shot on the weapon, and Galvanized Diffusion as well. Does Galvanized Shot work? Yes. Galvanized Shot is fully functional on the Kufano Core. This is not an AoE weapon per se, it's a single target weapon with a beam that jumps. I already did this explanation, so yes, you can go with Galvanized Shot. And of course, if you're gonna be going with Slash, you gotta get yourself a Faction mod as well, sadly. The problem with this build, I gotta use Saxon Spittle to get to a decent amount of slash procs on my targets. And because of that, it doesn't leave a whole lot of room for critical chance and critical damage on the weapon. Take note, you should never really use base critical chance mod on the Kufa Nukor because of the weak 7% base critical chance, but you should use critical damage from prime target cracker. So you see, my friends, is a bit of a give and take. What do I do in that case? Well, my recommendation to you is either to drop prime heated charge or to drop Galvanized Shot and in the Arcane slot go for more flat damage, something like Secondary Merciless. So you drop this, you get the flat damage from Secondary Merciless, but then you lose a whole lot of flat damage from this one, or you can lose Prime Heated Charge. You see, you're making a whole lot of compromises at this point. If I had one more mod slot, it would definitely be fantastic, but I don't. So this kind of concludes the whole, if I'm going for an Impact Kufanu core. Don't let them tell you it's not viable. Oh, it is plenty viable and you can clear steel path with no problem whatsoever, provided you have the right mods. It's not the direction I went through with this build, but I did want to explain how the build would actually work. Now let's say you're a newer player starting the game and you don't know what to build or how to build. You're looking at a standard build of something like Sue. Damage with Hornet Strike, Multi-Shot with Battle Infusion, as well as Lethal Torrent, Critical Chance, Creeping Bullseye, Critical Damage, Target Cracker. Again, we're using standard mods that everybody might have. I'm also going to be using the 90 mods here. The 90 corrosive mods because I'm going for a flat damage approach. Believe it or not, this is how I feel that the Kufa Nukor is not necessarily at its best mathematically, but feels the best. And for me, gameplay feel always goes above something like, oh, it's 5% uh, better or whatever else. I don't really care all that much. Go for some fire rate because I'm crazy with pistol ammo mutation gunslinger. And when it comes to fire rate, I know what you're going to say, brah, brah, brah. What about the anemic agility thing? More fire rate. Yes, yes, but you see, it's not the same as it is for primary weapons. You're looking at an 18% fire rate increase for 15% of the damage. In this case, not really worth it. We're gonna test out the weapon like so. Again, we're talking about normal, average, everyday mods. Oh, did I tell you this is a 60% tox? I told you this is a 60% tox. Level 120, corrupted heavy goons as per usual. And we're also gonna be having level 120 exogog. Now the Exogog are here because you guys keep yammering on about it. So there you go, you're gonna have Exogog. You're probably gonna expect in the Kuvano core not to do a whole lot, but my friends, it can melt targets, as you can see. Now I do miss the old Kuva new core when you can arc to more targets simply because it looked better, but as you can see, the weapon is fully capable of destroying high-level targets, even an Exogog stat with normal, average, everyday mods. Is this good enough for Steel Path Endurance level cap? No. 
obviously not, but it'll do the job for Star Chart and even do the job for normal level Steel Path up until level 130-ish maximum, something of the sort. With again, normal average everyday mods, because you see, a whole lot of players have forgot the power of raw strength. Raw damage, the plain old hammer, and no slashes, no damage over time, nothing of the sort. It does work, even though it may not be necessarily the most <laughs> optimal approach. Now, enough about that, enough about that. What if? What if you got all the mods at your disposal? You're looking at something like this. We're gonna be using Lethal Torrent as before with the 290 mods. We're gonna be using Galvanized Diffusion, Galvanized Shot, Secondary Deadhead, because again, raw strength approach, Prime Target Cracker, because we're gonna be getting ourselves critical chance from outside sources. You see, I got no CC on the weapon because it's borderline pointless. Even with Creeping Bullseye, I only went to 21% from 7%. Is it viable? <sighs> I mean, you can carry water in a paper bag. It is viable. It will work. Is it the best idea in the world? Probably not. Don't tell that to people who recycle. That's a great idea. Fantastic idea. You guys do it. Don't, don't mind me. Now, where was I? Yes, critical chance is going to be coming from outsized sources. But I want to show you what the weapon can do with just Arcane Avenger alone. Right? So let's equip Avenger, Avenger, there we go. With Arcane Avenger alone, that's 45% critical chance bonus additive after simply stacking on top of what you already have. In my case, I'm gonna go from 7% to 52% with just Avenger alone. Now, you can also use the Kitty, but honestly, that Kitty dies so often, might as well not use it, if you know what I mean. Now, I'm gonna let him hit, no wait, did I unpause you guys? Oh, well, well. Now these guys are gonna start hitting me and I'm gonna be getting myself my Avenger buff. You can see it in the upper right corner. Yes, I'm aware I can use Harrow's Convenant, but not just yet. So with Arcane Avenger alone, you're gonna be seeing a huge, huge difference in performance. Plus the Galvanized one, of course. Take a look at that. It absolutely melts targets with no problem whatsoever. The only thing you really need to make this weapon work is Arcane Avenger. Go for headshots because... Critical weapons get a huge benefit when it comes to headshots. If you don't know what I mean, if you don't know location-based multipliers and all whatnot, click the cards right now for a full and detailed guide on that. And you can use the range to your advantage. Take a look at this. I can absolutely destroy targets from a mile away. I love that 29 meter default range. And as you can see, it can melt targets with no problem whatsoever. There are no Warframe buffs here outside of Arcane Avenger. And of course I can use Harrow, but first I want to show you what this build can do in normal, average, everyday Steel Path. Welcome to Steel Path, my friends, and we got Daddy Revenant with Combat Discipline. Because if I'm not using Combat Discipline, I cannot get my buffs from uh, Arcane Avenger. You get how that one works. Yes, you know the trick? You guys should know the trick by now. Can we get Avenger? Can we get Avenger? Okay, Battle Diffusion. Arcane Avenger is up, no problem whatsoever. So that's the trick you can use if you didn't know by now. If you want Avenger on uh, Revenant, you gotta use yourself Combat Discipline as an aura. As for the performance of the weapon, I'm just gonna let it speak for itself. This is level 130-ish. Corrupted, yes. Steel Path. Essentially blowing up targets. Obviously, the um, corpus are going to be dying a whole lot easier, which is why I'm not an advocate to build weapons versus corpi, unless unless you want to go level cap versus corpus, and even then, not really. Again, the corpus are not really hard to take out, but they are problematic in terms of their damage and their abilities. They're a whole lot more agile, and again, problematic compared to something like the Grenier. Is that the guy there? The guy went close. Guy? Oh, okay, so I killed him. Keep in mind that the guy has extra damage mitigation because he is the capture guy and all whatnot. Now I'm stalling for time because I do need more beefier targets than these. These are too easy to take out, as you probably can tell. There we go, we got a Corrupted Heavy Goon, level 131, and that's all she wrote. This weapon is so much more than just a primer. This weapon has full capabilities of clearing steel path with no problem whatsoever. It's not gonna do fantastically well against something like level cap, definitely not. Oh, is that a, that's one of those, what are you going, fight me. You fancy Sheximus, there you go. So much for the Eximus. And while the weapon may not be doing fantastically well against level cap, it can more than easily clear normal steel path. And by normal steel path, I mean just clearing star chart steel path. That should make sense to you at this point. Now, of course, you can get better buffs than this if you want to. You can use Harrow and use his Convenant and essentially buff up the critical chance of the weapon to a staggering amount as long as you can get headshots. So you know what? Why don't we do that right now? 
Now, I did say that the weapon does have one usability issue, right? So, in all fairness, yes, the ammo is a concern, and there are some missions that by the time I reach the end, I'm almost bone dry on ammo. But we're gonna be fixing that one with Harrow or any other Warframe that you want for the use of this fantastic arcane, fantastic arcane, and the name is. Da -da 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 -dum, arcane. Pistolier on pistol headshot kill 60% chance for 102 ammo efficiency for 12 seconds and the usual plus one arcane revive Honestly, you gotta use this one with a raw strength damage approach that I'm using right now on the Kuva Nucor If you're going for damage over time, not so much because again, it's on headshot kill So it's not gonna work with a impact based Kuva Nucor, but with a corrosive one with a toxin one it's gonna work a treat and you're gonna get to conserve your ammo, which is absolutely fantastic. Of course, Avenger has before corrosive projection against heavily armored targets. Now you see this Harrow build has uh, adaptation and rolling guard. These two together with Null Star should make it possible for you to survive Steel Path. And when I say that, again, we're talking about normal level steel path. Don't take it against level cap because you're never gonna reach there alive. So do bear that one in mind. For that, I got another build for you. Oh, by the way, you guys wanna see AoE God Harrow? No, 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 I'm serious, AoE God Harrow. Link the guys right now for a full and detailed build guide on that. But getting back to our fish, we're gonna be using the Panzer Volpofila, which will get us vital procs on our targets, fantastic. We're gonna be leveling it to 165. I wish I had level cap here. I, I don't understand how hard can it be to give level cap here or whatever level I want up until 9,999. And there's gotta be just a little check mark with apply steel path modifiers. You can't tell me it's that hard to do. They just don't wanna do it, do they? Do they? Well, anyway, we're gonna be activating Harrow's fourth ability. His fourth ability, Convenant, prevents all damage, saves everybody. You're gonna be giving yourself no thanks, but more importantly, this will be getting us our critical chance. And the second ability, this will grant us fire rate as well as reload speed. If you're on steel path, make sure to activate your free ability Null Star as well. And your one ability can get you that crowd control that you need to stay alive. Go for it! Because it's beautiful! It's beautiful, it's fantastic, my friends. Honestly, I don't care the way you build your Kuva Nucor. The only time I suffer is when I see Kuva Nucors being used only as primers for condition overload. Because you know what? It is great at that, but honestly, this weapon is just so much more. And it can clear house, even on high level targets, without any issue whatsoever. And I know what you're gonna say, Lazar, but you know, these, this is just Simulacro, man. What about Steel Path? What the? Is that the bug? Oh, yeah, that was the bug there for a second. What about, what about using Harrow with this build right now in actual Steel Path? Will it work? Will it stay alive? And the answer is, well, kinda. Funny, I could have sworn we were here a second ago. Now let's find some enemies and activate Harrow's fourth ability. There you go, here's enemies, perfect. It's the corrupted heavy goon, Eximus, baby, Eximus. Now I'm not gonna have my, whatchamacallit, stack. This being a galvanized setup, I will need a couple of kills. That's another Eximus over there. Just make sure to use your Nur Star as well as soon as your four runs out. Right about now. And your second ability would also be good. Apply crowd control if you want, and then just simply mow down your targets with great prejudice, my friends. With great prejudice, which should mow them down, like so. You might die, my friends, but if you see you're gonna die, simply press your roll, and then you go into rolling of the guard. Obviously, this being steel path, you should use everything at your disposal. You have a arsenal, not just a weapon, you have a warframe, primary, secondary, and so on and so forth. But as you can see, holy balls, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. The power of the build cannot be questioned. Now, okay, I will admit it, uh, this is a bit of a uh, sensitive build. You might die here and there in steel path, but you know what? Is that really a big concern for you? Do you really mind it that much if you die every now and again? Honestly, to me, it's not that big of a deal, but if you are concerned for that, you can simply use it with a powerhouse Warframe such as Revenant, Baruch, or whatever else you enjoy. By the way, what do you guys think on Baruch? Do you love him? I absolutely love that Warframe. I think he's absolutely insane. I got a full and detailed build guide in the cards right now. But in the meantime, let's clear house like so. And I do believe, my friends, that is pretty much all I wanted to tell you. As always, my name has been Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. And if you love the content and you want to help me keep making it, consider supporting us via Patreon. There will be a link in the cards in the upper right portion of the screen right now. But until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.
That was the wrong animation. That was the wrong animation. Oh, frick off. 